therapists of Reddit what was your I need a minute moment? More of a funny story but I arrived at a client's house for a session, I was doing in home therapy for adolescents at the time, with a 13 year old kid. He was a little late getting home from school so he wasn't there yet. His mother has me sit down to wait for him and says that while he's not home she wanted to ask me something. I'm assuming it's about her son since that's why I'm there. She proceeds to ask me why I think her boyfriend won't perform oral sex on her and if I have any suggestions to change that. Really didn't see that one coming. Not a therapist but volunteered on a suicide hotline for a number of years. Took a call from a young woman who was hysterical on the phone, was difficult to make out what she was saying amongst her sobs but I could make out she was outside. I asked her where she was and she replied that she was on the top floor of a multi-story car park and was contemplating jumping off. I talked with her, tried to calm her, meanwhile I was shaking like a leaf. But to no avail. She jumped and the line went dead. It was in the local paper not soon after and it stayed with me for years. I worked in child slash adolescent crisis before my current job. I could tell a lot of stories. But the one that still really sticks with me is this. If you're not familiar with crisis units in the hospital, they have CCTV so security guards can watch multiple patients simultaneously to monitor behavior for safety. I'm working a crisis case of a 12 year.0. Male after a few years at the same hospital. The child had been aggressive toward staff, broke a crisis worker's nose, so he'd been put in four-point restraints, don't even get me started on that human rights violation. One of the guards comes to me and says, I think you need to see this. He pulls up a screen recording and there's a video of mom putting her hand down the child's pants, gesticulating her hand inside his pants, then pulling her hand back out after a few strokes. And then, a few minutes later, the same thing. I call CPS, they come down, watch the videos. I call his long-term mental health therapist and say, I'm sorry to tell you this, but we saw, mom, molesting, child, on video. Therapist screams I knew it. I knew she was molesting him. We call dad down, who hasn't been in the kid's life much. He says he got chased away by mom for a lot of reasons, but one of them was that he got creeped out by things mom would say and do. For instance, mom allegedly told him she was attracted to girlish looking boys with long hair, which just about summed up the child. Mom is asked about the incidents and says that she wasn't molesting the child, says that the child has a tick and needs his balls moved sometimes to stop the tick. He couldn't get the tick himself because of being in restraints, so she just did it for him. Twice. CPS found that an acceptable excuse and ruled the case unfounded. I don't know what was worse, watching the videos or hearing that CPS watched the same videos as me and said yeah that's okay. Once had a client with a child who did nothing but scream at the parent for about 20 to 30 minutes straight. As soon as they left, I cried for 20 minutes due to how emotionally charged the word slash accusations. I tried to diffuse it at times, but it continued to rebound quickly. The time I had to clean a bloody bathroom scene where an incredibly disturbed girl had self-harmed herself throughout our rec complex. A local GR4 class from a neighboring school used our pool so it had to get cleaned that night. I needed a month actually. Not a therapist but social worker who works with traumatized children. We got this underaged girl who was raised by a mother suffering of Munchausen by proxy syndrome which essentially means the mother pretends that her child is sick to get attention and the pity of people. This goes as far as poisoning her own child or even mutilate it to have a reason to seek doctors. The mother in question was incredibly abusive even when her daughter got taken away from her. For some reason officials never took child custody from her which made it easy to have influence on her daughter's live. She specifically used it to tell her daughter that she loved her and she will always be there for her, but every time crap actually hit the fan and she needed to be there, she wasn't. One day her daughter got pregnant but the child died within a few days so an abortion needed to be done ASAP to prevent pregnancy poisoning. All she needed to do was granting permission by email but although I called her several times and she assured me she would send it, it just never came. Her daughter was forced to have her dead unborn child in her womb for three days for the sole reason that her mother just didn't do anything. We finally reached out to CPS and got permission through them but her daughter was deeply traumatized by this and just never recovered from it. Seeing her like this was my first I need a minute moment. Not a therapist, but I used to be a school social worker. We had two students who were murdered by their dad. The next day a student told me that she knew they were being abused, but didn't tell a single person so she broke down in my office blamed herself for them getting murdered because she didn't tell anyone they told her they were getting abused. The next day this student had a suicide attempt. The next week the schools shut down because of COVID. I attempted to follow up with her remote and checked in, but a month into the schools being closed I lost contact with this student. I still think of her every day and hope she's doing alright. I would say my therapist moment was when a 10 year old child described to me in vivid detail how his mom's boyfriend locked him in a dog kennel and brutally stabbed his mom to death right in front of him took her body to the woods and threatened to kill him if he told someone. I still see this client and I work on helping him work through the grief and emotion processing, as well as building coping skills. He's still super young, but I worry that he's going to get some unhealthy coping skills to cope with this trauma. When I was a kid I went to therapy, I asked my therapist if she felt like I deserved what happened to me. She stepped out of the room, came back in a few minutes later clearly having had cried. She then said, no, you did not deserve it. I'll never forget it. I felt terribly sorry for upsetting her. But now I better understand. I hope she is well. First internship on my path to counselor and I was working in funeral home under the grief counselor there, grief and trauma is my focus. 
We were taught to be strong and supportive to those grieving of course and if we needed to cry, go in the back or to the bathroom. I escorted an elderly lady to view her husband before the service. I helped sit her in the chair in front of the casket and was standing behind her when she stood up and laid on the casket, bawling her eyes out declaring how much she loved him, missed him, and begging him not to leave her, come back. That totally destroyed me. I immediately started crying behind her. She stood up and I sucked it up to help her walk back into the hall to start greeting guests. I thought I had did a good job collecting myself, but my mentor took one look at me and softly said, go to the back room, which I did. I completely lost it for a few minutes, cleaned up and went back to help with the service. I definitely needed that minute. I'm a trauma therapist for foster kids so sometimes I need to take a walk about a session where they talk about severe physical or sexual abuse. I'm no longer in mental health but I was a mental health professional in a big city jail for years. I had a few moments where I needed to take an extended bathroom break to compose myself, breaks were not allowed outside of lunch. I had one person admit to molesting his very small children and tell me he thought it was what they wanted, had another confess to a brutal murder, every greystone detail, with a straight face, another who would routinely dig up his mother's grave to put her in different clothes, and one who murdered his abuser. That job was nuts and made me realize how you never really know anyone or why they do anything. I was so burnt out I left the field altogether. It sucks because I know that's my calling but I'm too old to go back to school for a master's now.